Hober is complete. Hoberg and Rubio will move Al Nayadi into the crew lock portion of the airlock. They'll then close the hatch and begin depressurization of that airlock, eventually preparing for the external hatch to be opened and our spacewalkers to head outside. Some fun information about the spacesuits as we prepare for these crew members to uh, get out of the hatch this morning. These suits are obviously fitted on the ground for the crew, but they also refit their suits in space to account for any spinal elongation or fluid shifting that has occurred since they arrived at the International Space Station. The suit has six layers. It provides atmospheric containment, thermal insulation, cooling, solar radiation protection, and micrometeoroid or orbital debris protection. Engineers on the ground take about 80 measurements to ensure each spacewalker has the best fitting spacesuit, which includes about 16 major elements that compose the suit itself. This includes three different sizes of torsos, eight sizes of elbow joint pieces, two sizes of adjustable waists, five sizes of knee joint pieces, and 65 sizes of gloves or custom fitted gloves. Now that the Safer is properly attached to Sultan Al Nayadi's spacesuit, Hoberg and Rubio are working to move him into the crew lock portion of the Quest airlock. Once our two spacewalkers are situated, Rubio will exit that portion of the airlock and rejoin Hoberg in the equipment lock section. They'll then close the hatch and begin depressurization of the crew lock area.
because the International Space Station is just that, international. The time zone GMT is used, so it's a 12.17 p.m. on the space station. These crew members are essentially in the middle of their day. Again, we're looking for about a six and a half hour spacewalk. That spacewalk clock will begin when their suits are turned on to battery power. A smile from NASA astronaut Woody Hoberg, today's suit IV. He's been helping the astronauts get suited up, along with Frank Rubio, they're closest to the screen. They're both in the equipment portion of the Quest airlock. Now both crew members are in the crew lock portion, and the next steps will be to close the hatch between the two and prepare for depressurization. Bonjour. Thank you, Richard, for having me here at the Council for Foreign Relations. Merci à tous d'être ici. It's great to be back in New York. This is a place where the world comes together, comes to connect. And the Council is a 
great institution for that very reason. Last month, Canada welcomed President Biden to our parliament. The president is a great guy. He's not only a strong partner of Canada, he's an enduring friend. Before he started his address, I remembered how President Reagan, over three decades ago, called the U.S.-Canada border a meeting place rather than a dividing line. And I pointed out that today our border is no longer just a place where we meet each other. It's a place where we will meet the moment. And this is a moment of uncertainty like we haven't seen in our lifetimes. We're three years into a global pandemic. The rising cost of living is putting real stress on families. Despite job growth and wage growth, there's a lot of economic anxiety. Climate change is having a real and terrifying impact on people's lives. War has returned to Europe and authoritarianism is on the rise. Antagonistic states around the world are using our economic interdependence for their own geopolitical advantage. And all around us, we see more and more polarization. Every day, 